So confidence, what is it? Confidence, just like anything else, is a skill. So Matt, but listen, I want to change my life. I want to change my finances. I want to, I want to consider the, the uh, career of entrepreneurship. I want, I want to do something bigger and special in my life. But man, I feel so like a fish out of water. I don't know how to breathe in this world. I know it's like to be on the streets. I know it's like to be in the hood. I know it's like to be in my neighborhood. I know it's like to be in my career. But man, really business, really financial success. I don't know, man. Do I deserve it? Man, that's what we get a lot from the people we coach and mentor as aspiring entrepreneurs. And joining me today is my business partner, Mr. Rudy Ortiz. What's going on, Rudo? What's going on, man? How you doing, brother? But a lot of guys don't know about Rudy. Not only is my business partner, he's a hundred thousand dollar income earner, but he come he comes from Humble Park, Illinois, which is which is the which is a, which is a beautiful part of Chicago. You know, they have nice um, swimming pools in the back there at uh, yeah, Mahoney Beach. <laughs> not really, but uh, uh, that's not. We're talking about the hood, so. Uh, we're joined here by Rudy today, and also as a special guest, we're going to add him on here too as well in about five seconds. Three, two, one. Booyah is our good friend Donald Quinine, who is from, right. who's from South Central LA. What's, what's going on, brother? Oh, man. So I'm from, from South, South Central, Central. Away of Compton. <laughs> by Way Compton, man. That's it. So uh, we're excited to have these gentlemen on. Uh, the show today on the key to increasing your confidence as an aspiring entrepreneur. And if you're watching this right now, I'm glad you're uh, tuning in. Um, I see a lot of people are, are, are uh, logging in right away and, and, and sharing. By the way, uh, before I get any further, um, we are giving away this book. Can we go solo on me real quick so I can show them this book? A uh, solo. Yeah. Uh, we're going to give away this book right here. Little Book of Sales. Little book of sales, little red book of sales by Jeffrey Gitmer. Why are we giving this to you away? Because in, the number one skill for you to learn as an entrepreneur is to increase your sales skill, so your confidence can increase. Matt, I, I, I don't know how to sell, you know, from from you know from slanging and slanging and gang banging and all that crap. By the way, these guys uh, were around that neighborhood, uh, grew up in the neighborhood they, they they were raised in, by way of Compton, by way of Humble Park, uh, but there's a way to sell. Legally, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to give you guys this book uh, as a gift for sharing this live stream. So, by the end of this live stream, Brandon is going to do a tally on how many people actually share this to other people's profiles, other groups that you are a part. So, we're going to give you a few moments right now to do that, so you can share this video and the people that shares this the most. We're going to send this from our office to your office or address, wherever you want us to send this to you, as a gift from the Money Smart Guy for being part of this live stream. Cool. So let's talk about confidence, man. So um, uh, uh, Rudy, you know, while, while, you're here in, while you're here in your office, you know, of course, uh, Quinine is together with us too as well. Um, I call Rudy, my nickname for him is Rude Dow. And uh, Donald Quinine's nickname is Superman. You. Yeah. Right? So we, we, got, uh, <laughs> we got some characters here. We, we got Spider here, S.A. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, listen, guys, uh, these guys are six-figure income earners doing it today in the business world, in the insurance industry, as marketing directors here at PHP Agency. So uh, let's talk about this real quick. Rudy, you coach a lot of people. And sometimes one of the things you keep bringing up to me sometimes based on the feedback you're getting as we're doing workshops is people don't have a high identity when it comes to actually getting paid what they're worth. They know to work but they don't pay to what they're worth. Can you explain a little bit to me? Absolutely, man. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. So yesterday I got a chance to do a workshop here at the office and um, I was addressing that same thing when I first got started in business and Matt, you know, you were a big uh, influence in that, especially when I came over into the insurance world and, and into the agency building model. I remember when I seen the potential and I seen the possibility of what could be done, mm -hmm. I remember approaching you and I said, hey, Matt, you know, great presentation, really cool information. You're my boy. We've known each other for 10 years at that time. Look yeah. me in the eyes and tell me that I can make that kind of money. Yeah. And I still remember to this day that you kind of laughed in my face <laughs> and you said, Rudy, you don't believe you can make that kind of money? And that was an eye-opening thing for me. Yeah. You know, uh, at, even at that point, my wife and I had made some really good money. We were doing over six figures 
but you know, talking about making three, four, five, six hundred, a million dollars, two million dollars a year, that was very foreign to me. And and I came to the realization mm -hmm. that I didn't have the confidence in myself yep. to believe that I can make that kind of money. And you know, digging deeper now, you know, it's been a long time and and, and we're doing a lot better as far as our identity and, mm -hmm. and even our income. But what I've come to realize, Matt, is that uh, people's lack of confidence in themselves, it's really an identity issue. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, and, and maybe that has to do with the upbringing. Maybe it has to do with the with stories that they've told themselves, that they've other people that matter in their life have told them. Yep. And therefore, they've bought into this limiting belief that yep. they can't accomplish things because maybe I came from somewhere where nobody's made that. Right. And therefore, I'm not worthy of that. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. So, Rudy, if you guys don't see him, he's he's very dark. We call right? he's, he's, he's dark chocolate over here. He's uh, he's Puerto Rican by background. Where, by the way, we're in Puerto Rico. Uh, Las Piedras, Puerto Rico. There you go. Yes. And so, uh, uh, let's 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 shift to quinine real quick. So, Superman, um, talk to us about that because you, you're 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 building a team, recruiting a team in an area that all the financial services companies in America are dying to get into. Which is South Central LA, in Downey, <laughs> in, in, in Dayton, Ohio. Everybody, every financial, I can't tell you right now how many ads I get from New York Life saying, Do you know anybody in South Central LA we can bring into the insurance industry? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't say that. Hey, man, you're talking about a guy that's used to hearing bullets for so many years that when we hear gunshots, we just kept talking. It didn't, because we were just so used to it. And uh, the defining moment was me. I was a security guard for 16 years, really didn't have that much belief in myself. I was at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles. And when I was there, I was a post commander. And um, they filmed movies there. After 5 o'clock, if I wanted to make some extra money to pay my bills, I would have to do overtime. And one time they was filming a movie at the museum, and I was on like my 20th hour and I'm the post commander and I just felt like I was going to die. I felt like I didn't have much left. Samuel Jackson, who was filming the movie there, came up to me really? and he said, and he said, young man, what are you doing? I say, well, what do you mean by that? He said, how do it feel to be standing here working 20 hours and looking like you? is about to die. How long have you been doing security? I said, I've been doing it 16 years. He said, well, by now you should have been owning the company. If you're going to do security, go all the way. Don't be the guy just standing here working for somebody else, not hardly making no money, have to kill yourself. Whatever you're going to do, he said, business owners make the most money. He said, do you want to be the guard or do you want to be the one that owns security companies? Hmm. So... After talking to Samuel Jackson like that, I had a defining moment in my life that I wanted to do something different. I said, there's no way I'm going to get to where I want to be in life without being an owner. And after that, I sat down, I joined financial services probably about six months after that talk with Samuel Jackson. And it changed my life because I, I was a little different. I wasn't afraid to fail. I was afraid that if I did make it, I'll still be a security guard for the rest of my life, making 10 or $12 an hour. So I came in with a mindset is that I have to make it, that I have to succeed. And I took a lot of excuses out of um, a lot of excuses from people that grew up like me. My father was murdered at 10 years old. Uh, my mother had to work two jobs in South Central L.A. I never seen her. She worked from five to one, then from three to 11. I was 13 years old, put in a position where I didn't have no childhood, where I had to raise my, raise my brothers and sisters by myself while my mom had went to work. But I did not use that as a reason to fail. I used it as a reason to succeed. And even though I lost my father, even though I had to raise my brothers by myself, living in the worst parts of Compton, being shot at, that I still was able to go into the financial field and make sick figures and be able to change my life because of the determination that I had. Man, that's awesome, brother. And, and uh, 
We have a special song for you. I make sure we play here, man. You know, representing. Still waters run deep. Still right there, you, you know. <laughs> That's it. Hey. All right, Silver Cable. That's my song right there, man. I used to have, I used to have a Jerry Curl when that song came out, man. Believe it or not, I don't have hair now, but. Uh, Rudy, man, I used to have a jerry curl, man. It, it didn't quite take. It didn't quite take, so I had something like a jerry curl. <laughs> see, 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 that's how Samuel L. Jackson met you when he was filming Pulp Fiction. Yeah, that, that's what happened. With, <laughs> you guys, had yeah, that's movie. what happened with it. <laughs> so, so let, let's let's talk about this real quick, Rudy. Sure. Somebody comes to us, you know, they they, they come to our office. They see it all the time because people are making twelve bucks an hour, making fifteen bucks an hour. How can they start thinking bigger? That's a great question, Matt. You know, I, I think that, um, first of all, I believe that it doesn't matter what your background is. And I think Quinine's a great example of that. It, it's not about where you've been or what you come from. It's where you're going that matters. And that's about really making a decision and understanding that you have, you know, you have God-given potential in you yep. that you haven't uh, tapped into yet. That's really all yep. it is. And some people settle. Some people die frustrated because they don't tap into that. Some people, very few, maximize that potential and they create legacies. So really, it's about making a decision. The first thing you got to decide what you want to do with your life and mm -hmm. and understanding that you have value to provide Two, uh, it, it, with regards to increasing your confidence. Uh, one of the things that has really worked a lot for me is increasing my competence. I always tell my team nice. competence breeds confidence. And so if you're out there and, and you want to increase your confidence and you want to increase your income tied to that, because we're talking about business here as well, right? Yeah. Um, then you got to increase your competence. And that means that you got to, you got to invest time into developing a highly valuable skill that is valuable to the marketplace that somebody will give you big money for. Mm -hmm. And usually that's usually tied to solving bigger problems. It's not about you. It's about the problem that you can solve for people. And so if you can solve a big problem for people, they'll give you money to, yeah. to solve that problem. You know, that's yeah. what surgeons do. Now, granted, surgeons have to go get, you know, 12, 15, 20 years of, of education. There's yeah. easier ways to do it. I think Matt and I have kind of discovered that, that you don't have to go to school for 15 years and spend 300 grand yeah. to become valuable. It's really just about finding those problems and, and, uh, and tackling them right away. The other thing I would say is find a, a community of like-minded people. You have to surround yourself with other people that are going to feed you, that are going to inspire you, that are going to uh, speak life into you, man. So many people are surrounded by medio mediocrity, by, by people who have settled and by haters. Literally, they're just people that, you know, they'll, they'll smile in front of you, but they'll backstab you in the back. And that's just low level. Yeah. Thinking and low level environments, you're never going to be able to get ahead if you're in that type of environment. So increase your competence, um, change your environment, make a decision, and you'll be well on your way, in my opinion, Matt. Awesome, Ruduck. There's a lot of comments here, a lot of ha high fives here. Jacqueline Marano is giving high fives here. Doc Malilas is joining us from uh, by way of Long Beach. He's a, a corpsman, uh, former corpsman in the, in the Navy. Uh, Jose Ochoa, Money Making Machine, that little red book. Yeah. So if, if he's talking about this little, little red book of sales, right, as a money making machine for you guys. And by the way, if you guys are commenting on us, uh, Brandon here is going to make sure you, uh, we, we recognize your comments. He's going to pop it up on the screen here. Uh, so you guys, you guys can comment away. We're seeing it. We're recognized. We want to give you recognition too, as well, that you're engaged in the conversation too, as well, because uh, building this community about, about entrepreneurship, about the multicultural middle class rising up in the world in terms of their personal finances and, and, and understand that, man, there's a bigger story out there because so much negative news gets out there. We're doing this every Wednesday at 1 p.m. The Money Smart Show um, is to make sure that we're out here to make sure you guys know that there's a community of positive noise that's out there, too, as well. Quinine, let's get back to you, Superman. Um, you, you started a brand new location in Dayton, Ohio. And by the way, we are looking forward to you joining us this Saturday yeah. for our fast start school. Uh, so you're bringing yourself and it was many other people that you're uh, mentoring there in Dayton, Ohio, but bro, talk to us about that too as well, because it's not like you're in a, a big city. Um, you know, Dayton's, Dayton, Ohio is a little city. 
But how are you increasing people's stock price and increasing their confidence that there's more to making money in their life than what they were growing up, the, what they grew up around with then in well, your, uh, that neck of the woods? And that's a good question because when I first was thinking about coming out here, the average income was fam for families was 27000 a year. Woo! That's the average income. So people's like, man, that's not going to work. Like Nobody is hardly making – Nobody, nobody hardly making no money. Um, and then they, I came out here to Dayton. And, and what I realized, people don't care until they know you care. Mm -hmm. And I said it was going to be a challenge. But um, being over here, out here over a little over a year and a half, uh, we have so many people that have came on as entrepreneurs now they're making more money than they ever made in their their lives and we took this little small this little small city this little small town by storm then and turned it into a, a powerhouse in the company and, and we just i just got people and i said you know what what do you believe are you getting paid what you're what you're worth what do you believe do you, what do you believe you're worth and then they started coming in and they was writing down, I believe I'm worth this. And I was telling them, when you graduated from high school, what did you want to be? What are some of your goals and dreams that cost you money? If you could take anybody with you on a trip anywhere right now, who would it be? I had people crying saying, I would take my mom, I would take my dad, I would take my grandmother, I would take my uncle, because all these people have sacrificed so much for me in their tears. And I'm saying, well, how come you haven't been able to do that? And they said, because of the lack of income. I said, wouldn't that be? I said, because God is going to call us all home one day. How would it feel to be called home before you was able to ch achieve any of those goals that you described to me? And they said, Did I, they said, Don, I would not want that to happen. I said, well, let's go out and do it together. So they became, they started coming in by Bokes. We recruited 106 people um last That's month cool. and and opened up a brand new office downtown Dayton we're changing the community we freed up over 10.5 million worth of student loan debts for families broke the record with nationwide student loan on freeing up debt we got pastors that came on board with our event with our vision we getting all the pastors together in Ohio and we're gonna have a big day where we feed everybody and have it set up where if they need insurance, if they need student loan forgiveness, where they have a two-day program so they can come get the help that they need, and the opportunity, an opportunity. Some oh, Dayton was overlooked. A small city like this is looking for an opportunity because, you know, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was overlooked. I was overlooked. I was that security guard making 9 to $10 an hour. And then the main thing is your surrounding. You are who you surround yourself with. I never forget when I was at the gym, I was benching 400 pounds. I was the strongest dude in the gym, and I never got no stronger because I was stronger than everybody else there. Everybody's watching me bench 400 pounds, and I never got strong. I'm like, man, how come I'm not getting no stronger? Then I changed my surroundings and started going to a gym where everybody there was benching 450 and 500 pounds and 550 pounds, and uh -huh. I was the weakest guy in the gym. And next thing you know, I got stronger because I had people that was more advanced pushing me to be stronger. So I think that's all that um, Dayton was need. Now we have people on our team that's over the next three months is going to make more money in a life than they ever made in a year of being on that job. So uh, we brought life to the city of Ohio and I always tell people, Two things in life. We're either going to prove people wrong or prove people right. But we've been proving a lot of people wrong about the city of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we're um, coming up and we have been able to accomplish a lot of great things. And I always say, if you help enough people get to where they want to go in life, you automatically going to get to where you want to go. I, I just looked it up, by the way, uh, uh, Donald. There's, there's 140,000 people, 140,000 people in Dayton, Ohio. Wow. You yeah. know? So that that's it, and you're, you're making a splash. You're making making some headway there. Uh, you know, Donald said something uh, pretty particular there. So he took the the surroundings, which kind of, was kind of dovetailed what you said. Right. So, in other words, if you if you want to make more money, and you want to increase your confidence. 
What happens though, if it's so nerve wracking that you're around people that you don't think that you feel you deserve to be around, right? Because sometimes you're around people that make 25 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour. I remember coming to financial services, coming to business, and I, I don't have a college degree, and I talk to an accountant or I talk to an attorney. I talk to somebody that has a, ma a master's degree. And mentally, I'd be so intimidated. I don't know why. I'm 6'3". I'm Filipino, right? Down the Quinine bench is 400 pounds. Why am I getting so nervous talking to people with more education than me, right, uh, in, 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 in my conscious level? What, what do you think that stems from, in, 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 right? And, and if you're going to coach a young Matt, like, like, like Rudy, I feel so nervous talking to my uncle. I feel so nervous talking to... Uh, 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 educated person in my family because I'm not educated yet about business, about money. Hmm. How, how would you approach that situation? That's a good question, man. You know, I, I think that you're right. A lot of people, and again, it just goes back to what we've been originally talking about, which is self-identity, you know, uh, seeing people as, uh, you know, everybody sees themselves as a five in their sphere of influence and they have a problem talking to the six, sevens, eight, nines, and tens. Yeah, like, like for example, like a waiter, feels confident talking to the bus boy. Right. But they don't feel confident talking to their manager. The exactly. manager. Yep. And, and so a lot of that is just really about identity. However, you know, one of the things that I've come to realize is Quinine said something that was absolutely key is that if, you know, if you're the guy, if you're the smartest guy in the room, mm -hmm. then you're in the wrong room <laughs> because you're not going to grow. Yep. you got to put yourself in an environment where, both you, you have access to both types of people, people that are farther along than you in the road and, and the path that you've chosen to be in. Mm -hmm. And you've got other people that are trying to chase you or, or they're trying to be like you as well so that you can help and serve them. When you're in an environment like that, that actually brings out the, the maximum potential for you not only to grow and learn, but for also for you to give and serve. So, you know, that's really the, the key environment where everybody needs to be because yeah. now that maximizes you. However, uh, when it comes to talking to people that, you know, that are higher than us, you know, I, and I learned this from you, Matt, you know, we've got to keep things in perspective. And the reality is that everybody puts on their pants one leg at a time. Man. Yeah, this shit stinks too. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and uh, <laughs> the reality is statistically, guys, 92.6% of Americans make less than $100,000 a year. Okay, yeah. so know that. 37% uh, of people that make over six figures a year are broke. Yeah. So, so even though they're making six figures, they're living paycheck to paycheck. Just, you know, knowing these things and putting things in perspective makes you come to realize that regardless of how high or whatever they've accomplished, a lot of people are hurting. They're human. And uh, you can learn both from their successes and from their weaknesses. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's really just a matter of, of being a student of that, having a, a heart of humility but also having wisdom and, and um, uh, you know, keeping your eyes open to to how you can extract the lessons from everybody. Yeah. And, and just to add on to that dovetail before I go here at Quinine, uh, a gentleman, he's a, he was a power broker in Washington, D.C. As a, as a lobbyist. His name is Tony Podesta. And he was a major lobbyist, number three lobbyist in D.C. I was just reading in the Wall Street Journal this morning. But he lost his whole entire lobbying firm over $30 million in revenue from 100 clients. He lost it all at 74 years old. Wow. Because he made a couple bad decisions. And he got he got, he got got overly, he got cocky. Uh, Tom Elzer, the president of PHB Agency, he's got a word for this. He calls it hubris, H-U-B-R-I-S. He got overly confident, right? And, and I like saying hungry and humble. And, 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 and to that extent, I think the higher you get up, more the more – you, know, you guys are six-figure earners. The more we've learned over time, the more humble we become because we've seen guys make it, but also lose it all. And we're showing up, make sure that that never happens to us. Absolutely. Qu Quinine, uh, back to you, man. H how do you help, how do you help that new person who's thinking uh, twenty-seven bucks an hour uh, talk to somebody uh, to in their family in their sphere of influence? How do you get them to start um, speaking up and, and again and instead of being a waiter talking to the bus boy? How do I become a server that is confident talking to the manager and maybe even the owner of the restaurant? Well, that, that, that's a good question because that's what I had to do out here. Because the more you six-figure earners you put your team around, the more six, the more they're going to believe that they can do it. 
Is that so why you come here all, to Chicago? Huh? Is that why you come here to Chicago this weekend? That's why I'm coming here to Chicago this weekend. <laughs> I'm a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> So I, that's why I'm coming to sh- Chicago this weekend because it's more the more you put them around, just like, uh, for instance, I always tell uh, just we, uh, a perfect example. We um, a pastor allowed us to come into his his church and speak to his congregation, a big church out here in um, Dayton, Ohio, um, Pastor Allen from St. Luke Church. So I go speak at his church. And then it was over and he thought I was happy there that we was happy there. Oh, you got to speak at the church. And I said, you know what? That's fine and dandy, but I want you. Because if you get the if you get the pastor, you get the whole congregation. So I started teaching the team how to don't go for the waiters, you know, in particular, let's go for the the manager. And the more we was able to start to get them, the more their confidence grew. And that's just about all telling them like who's the most three successful people in your family that you think that won't be doing this business. And what I found out a lot is that sitting down with a lot of these guys that does make six figures like like uh Rudy was saying Rubio was saying is that sometimes they can make two hundred and fifty thousand but they spend in five thousand five hundred thousand a year and they still in debt. So it's not how much they make, it's how much they save. So I've been fortunate to run I've been running to a lot of people that have made money but haven't saved anything. So they still need what we do and after sitting down with them and and recruiting these uh, guys and, and helping them um, become successful in, um, in the financial business, that is all the same. You know, it's just that some people have more bills on a higher level. So no matter if somebody makes 200, 200,000 or, or, or 300,000 or 400,000, that everybody want to make money, everybody want to save money, and everybody want to spend less doing it. So I feel if you can show them how to do all three, they'll be willing to listen. And that's what made the team go for go start recruiting up and saying, you know what, I can talk to my uncle that's making a hundred, two, three hundred thousand a year. I can talk to my auntie. I can talk to my pastor um, to come inside the church and be able to help his congregation. So, and yeah. that started to build a lot of confidence when we started doing things like that. Do, do you think confidence is just like you bodybuilding and powerlifting? Do you think confidence is a skill that can be built and developed and strengthened? Just like any other physical skill. Yes, I, I, I'm a hundred. I'm a witness to that. When I first uh, was doing what I was doing, I first uh, got into. Um, I didn't have the confidence coming in as a security officer into the financial field. I had the confidence that I can help everybody that was just like me. Like if I ran into my buddies that was making ten dollars an hour or twelve dollars an hour, but my uncle. There was a millionaire. I was scared to get in front of him because my confidence wasn't there. So I, I, my first couple of months in business, I was only helping people that was in the same situation as me. I wasn't recruiting up. I wasn't helping up. I wasn't building up. So after a while, um, I took my mentor with me on an appointment with my uncle. I finally got the confidence to sit down with my million dollar uncle and when we sat down with him and I seen how many different vehicles that we helped him with that I didn't think was possible all of a sudden my confidence went through the roof hmm. now R- Rudy you know you're a mar- you're running your own agency quinine you're running your own agency mm-hmm. and and you're coaching and mentoring people and we have a system inside what we do is called the matchup system yep and and uh Helping a brand new person, instead of an aspiring entrepreneur trying to learn the financial or learn the insurance world, it's quite frank, because guys in the hood, they know the hustle. They know an illegitimate hustle. Mm -hmm. And they've always got to be watching their back. But imagine being in a a situation where you don't have to watch your back. That's legitimate. And now it's it's a real profession. How how does our matchup system and you hand-walking somebody through the steps help increase help you increase some of his comments when they're starting up brand new as an entrepreneur? Well, uh, that's a great question, man. I, I really believe that, you know, if people understood the power of that type of philosophy in that system, um, they'd implement it into regardless of what business they have. Unfortunately, you know, not everybody has the ecosystem to do it. We we're very grateful for it because I can work with a guy like Donald. I might have a person in Dayton, Ohio, who shows interest 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I connect them to Donald. Donald takes them mm-hmm. by the hand. So mm-hmm. this guy doesn't know anything about the industry. He might even be doubting himself yeah, and things yeah. like that. But he's able to work with a professional six-figure earner like Donald. Donald's able to take him out, train him in the field, get him some results, mm-hmm. right? And I think that results are one of the biggest keys in increasing your confidence. When you see that something works, especially you know in a business where, where you're putting some money in your pocket and mm-hmm. – you know, I, I've got a, a, a lady who uh, is on my team. She was in uh, in the school system for, for decades, right? And she was making a lot of money. Her position was abolished and her income, she lost literally, her and her husband lost uh, 65% of their income when Jeez. she lost her stuff. Oh. So now that affects their, their income, their, their lifestyle. She comes on board with us. She has no clue about this industry or this business, mm-hmm. but because she was able to work with me, I handheld her and we, we helped a few people in her family and some coworkers and things like that. Her very first check in this business was $2,200. Not bad. How, how, part, many, how many hours worth of work? Uh, maybe three hours worth of work. Three hours worth of work. She made $2,200 and her confidence, my God, just went through the roof. You hear that, everybody? You hear that? Three right. hours worth of work, $2,200 bucks first check. And, and, and that really increased her confidence because, remember, the, the word confidence, guys, comes from the rat, Latin root word fide, which is the word you get faith. Faith comes from the same word, Ooh. right? And so when she seen those results, it increased her faith, not only in our system, but in herself as well, in knowing that she has what it takes to be able to change her life and get her family what she needs right now. That's hot. That's hot. And so, you know, our matchup system is a phenomenal system where it allows new people to increase their faith. If they follow the system, if they're coachable yeah. and they follow the system, they're able to increase their confidence. They're able to increase their results and they're able to uh, compress time by leveraging somebody who has already been there and done that and knows how to do it better versus them going and hitting their head against the wall 20 million times, yeah. trying to figure it out. And then they lose confidence. So. Hey, guys, if you're just tuning in right now, you're watching the Money Smart Show. I'm your host, Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala, hailing to you from PHP Agency's Money Smart Team office here in Oak Brook, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. If you caught us on our vlogs every Sunday morning, we launch our vlog called Living Money Smart, where we take a, a vlogger. My guy, Brandon, here watches me on, on his iPhone, and he puts it up in, in, a, in, a, in a vlog format. You need to check that out. Every Sunday morning, we release that episode every Wednesday afternoon. We do this show live just to show with you. This is not a production. This is a real conversation with real people every Wednesday afternoon, 1 p.m. On Fridays, I do the same live stream again for veterans because I come from a veteran uh, background too as well, coming from Chicago, coming into the military community in the Marine Corps. Uh, I, I break things down here from a multicultural military uh, a standpoint and how to how to grow your business as an entrepreneur and take financial control. All right. Quinine, as we wrap stuff up here, bro, um, talk, talk to talk to the kid from the talk. Imagine you putting yourself in Samuel L. Jackson's. Uh, Don, did we lose you, bro? Are you still with us? I, I can barely hear you. All right, it looks like your Wi-Fi your Wi-Fi froze there. But uh, talk, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Cool. At least, at least we can hear you. Uh, well, let me let me ask you this question. If you're talking to a 10-year younger version than you right now, Quinine, right? You run into you just like Samuel L. Jackson ran into you. What would you tell a kid like you that has, man, I, w- I want to do something big in my life, but I'm looking around, moping around. What would you tell them to start increasing comes that they can deserve better in their life? Well, I, I think I, I heard some of what you said. If I was looking at a a... 10 year younger version of me, I was all, I was led, I was tell that person, uh, never be afraid to, to fail. First of all, I was tell them that. And then I would tell them, chase your dreams. I would say, chase your, I would say, chase your dreams, whatever your dream is, whatever you want to accomplish. And I was encourage them to be an entrepreneur with the retirement age, being the age it is now, I mean, and and eighty four percent are millionaires or self made. I was, uh, I was, you know, I was encouraging them. You know, be mm-hmm. an entrepreneur and have heart. And I will also let them know that sometimes when you're trying to accomplish your goals and dreams, that 
you're going to have to be willing to stand alone. Like it's a saying that the road is yours and yours alone. Many can walk it with you. No one can walk it for you. And I would tell him, hey, whatever you want to do, heart got me where I'm at. Heart got, when I was in the wheelchair, um, when I got shot being 13 years old, I just refused to quit. I refused to give up. And I was telling the young man, there's going to be trials and tribulations in your life that you're going to have to go through and be willing to go through it. And that a moment of pain can bring you a lifetime of glory. If you're willing to keep fighting and never give up on your goals and dreams, no matter what, that's what I would tell the young man. What's the favorite, what's the favorite part? Uh, I'll do this one. Cause then it looks like your wife is cutting out and I'll let you go. What's the favorite part? What do you think is your favorite part of what we do as entrepreneurs in the insurance world with PHP? Because I know you were with, you were with a former financial company before, but what's the favorite part of what you do here with us at PHP Agency? My favorite part, I never seen nothing like here at PHP. It's the relationships and the system that PHP have that is second to none, second to none. And I never seen you have so many people making hundreds and hundreds of thousands a year with no egos, with no ego. I mean, how we can just all get together and talk to each other. i never seen a company that name, people helping people. I mean, when I came to the company, I was not expecting this. I'm talking about everybody in the whole company wanting to see you win. Everybody in the whole company rooting for you. It don't matter what city, what state you're in, and just having the access to be able to talk, call a person. Not no secretary, but I could just call you. I can call you. I don't have to worry about somebody else's the phone. He may be able to let me try to get him. Let me see when I can squeeze you in. Just seeing the love, the love and the relationship and everything that Pat put together here as PHP is so hard for me to explain. The way you made my whole team just feel when they came out there. I mean, just the love that PHP have for everybody rooting for you and doing it with 70% minorities. I haven't seen nothing like it in my life. But anybody that is listening to this, that's watching this, that love that PHP have, that they really care about you. They really want you to win. They really want you to be successful. I haven't seen anything, anything like it in my whole entire career in financial services. If I would say anything, it's the love and the relationship building that you get from just meeting all these great leaders in the company and the humbleness of our leaders in PHP is second to none. Well, quite, I, I, I really appreciate that brother. And listen, you, you got direct access to me. Um, they know I call my secretary. If, I, if I'm not available, she's a backup, but she's not the primary, <laughs> but uh, th that's it, man. You know, you know why? Cause you know, like we said earlier, man, all, you know, we put our pants, like Rudy said earlier, our we put on our pants the same way. Um, you know, quinine, I, I understand that you're legally, you're legally blind in one, in your left eye, right? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So, so regardless of ability or disability, we are capable of, of, of surpassing where we once were by instilling this muscle called confidence, which is a key that needs to be practiced consistently, just like you working out and going to the gym, right? So therefore you can start putting together a skill set to get you results that increases your fidel. <laughs> right, they increase your confidence. Yep. So you know that's that's that pattern that that we're talking about here, man. And and, and bro, nobody's here. No, nobody at PHP agency is big timing. You know, the, you know, we all go through some. Everybody's got some. Everybody's got uh, a good days and bad days. So uh, Quina, by the way, did you, you know Palio's coming out here too as well at this this Friday Saturday? Oh yeah, I talked to him. I talked to him. I know it's going to be awesome. Man, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a unity presence in the uh, in. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well, man, listen, uh, I'm gonna let you go, brother. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for taking time during during your day. I know you're building a business out there in Dayton, Ohio, hustling, hustling, <laughs> and um, and uh, I, I wanted to play that one last song for you one last time, man, because uh, you just you just inspire me, brother. Bro. <laughs> That's it, man. When I come out tonight on stage, it's going to be because of you. <laughs> That's right. it, bro. Well, cool, man. Love, peace, and hair Thank green, bro. Guys. I'll see you here in the next couple of days. All right. All right, Quina. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, if uh, if you guys want to reach out to Donald Quina, if you're in the Dayton, Ohio area, drop a message, drop a comment. We'll make sure you get connected to Quina, six-figure income earner 
in in the 140,000 population. Yeah, man, he's crushing it. He's got yeah. amazing stories, doing big things out there. Very proud of him. Yep. So, Rude Dog, what, what about you, man, as we wrap stuff up here, too, as well? You're talking to a young Rudy Ortiz, mm -hmm. right? And you've got kids, too, as well. Um, you're talking to a young, a, a young 20 year old, 30 year old Rudy Ortiz out there, you know, uh, they're just looking for a shot, they look for a doggone opportunity. They finally come across an opportunity. What would you tell them uh, how to treat an opportunity? Because sometimes people either, either they go, they'll go one of two ways and, and one will increase your confidence and one will decrease your confidence. True. What would you tell them? Um, I'd say if they if they have an opportunity, and by the way, there's there is opportunity. Opportunity abounds. It it you'll attract it into your life when you're ready for it. Um, but the the biggest thing that I've learned in my life, Matt, you know, I'm 46 years old today, and there's three key things that I've learned. You are the sum of the books you read, the people that you associate with, and the meetings and the environments that you inject yourself with and attend. And so if I was talking to the 22 year old version of Rudy, which was a mess, he was jacked <laughs> up, um, I would tell him, you know, strengthen your value to the world by increasing your competence and increasing your skill set. You can easily do that by reading the books like the Little Red Book of Selling. Um, I'd say find a mentor like a Matt Zapala. And when you do, be absolutely 100% coachable. By the way, when I speak about a mentor, I'm talking about somebody who's in the game, in the trenches, in the field, getting it done, not a has-been. I'm not talking about a has-been, and I'm not taking you know, anything away from anybody that's done something, but I need somebody that's in it today, not well, somebody yeah. who did it 20 years ago. Yeah, The world has changed. I need somebody who's in it with me. He's in the trenches with me. He's on the fly. He's learning with me in the process, right? That's the kind of mentor I'm looking for. And when you find them, be coachable, listen to them, do what they tell you, uh, work at the speed of instruction. And I think that, you know, everything else will, they'll figure it out as they go because they'll evolve and grow and yep. everything they need will, will show up in their life at the time. Yep, yep. And for those of you out there right now, if I was to ask myself that same question, you know, um, you know, oftentimes, um, yeah, listen, Commit to committing and quit quitting, mm. right? So many people uh, stab at an opportunity. A, a fastest way to decrease your confidence, and we're talking about a key to increase your confidence during the show, but the fastest way to quickly decrease and unravel your confidence is to quit. Yep. It's to say, you know what? Let me plug myself out of this environment. And and, and to plug into what? Your, your, your same old, same old, the same environment that you're looking to get out of. See, that's what I see a lot about yeah, people that quit a system or what we call jumpers or in that book, Outwitting the Devil, they call them drifters. Yep. They drift here, drift one relationship, drift one company, drift one career. You know, I, I, I very rarely do I give precedence to somebody that's been doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, and never stick with any one thing and get really good at one thing. I've been doing this now for 19 years. It'll be 20 years here towards the end of the year. Right. I took my first notes in 1998 because I wanted to be somebody. I was taking notes from video, <laughs> videotapes, VHS, cassette tapes, because right? there's no YouTube back then. And I just wanted to be something different. Why? Because I didn't want to live in my current situation. I didn't want to wait four or five, six years to finish college. I don't want to wait another two years after that to get my master's and follow that traditional route. I need to make money now. I don't get if I was going to work, I'm going to work hard at something that was tangible to me. So um, commit to committing and to quit quitting. And, and if you have an opportunity in front of you right now, go all in. Listen, I, 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 can, I can say this because I, I can see I can see people say, well, Matt, you're very biased to PHP agency. Listen, I don't care if you're selling soaps, potions, and lotions. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're going door-to-door -door knocking. I don't care if you're selling T-shirts, but give it all you got. Now, with that being said, if you're going to give it all you got, now you got to make sure what your profit margins are. you gotta, you got to figure out what your scalability is. you got to figure out how much time and attention you're going to put in, especially here in Chicago where the weather can't make up its mind. <laughs> Like, like yesterday, it was snowing in the morning. It's like, imagine having to do door-to-door -door sales. You got to knock on doors. It's snowing outside. And by the way, five do five days ago, it was 70 degrees. 70 degrees. Brandon yeah. just told me this afternoon is going to snow. <laughs> yep. you know, so, so don't be like the weather. Don't be like Chicago <laughs> weather. Make up your stinking mind and stick with it. That's the key. That's the key right there to increasing your confidence as an entrepreneur and, and that's spreading yourself so thin. We got to have, remember all the, the people say, well, we got so many irons in a fire. Pick one iron. Seriously. Pick one iron, 
where you naturally feel a disposition of confidence, of energy, get in that one thing of all the irons, remove all the irons. I got multiple streams of income. No, they're not multiple streams. They're multiple trickles. <laughs> find one. Find, find the iron in you that burns the hottest and make that, right? And make that just, just trickle over to everybody because money is energy. And I want you to be able to express that in in in, uh, in your business, in your life. I want you getting up every day, man. I want you getting up every day, fired up about life. I want you every day saying, you know what? I'm excited about my day and not, oh my gosh, I can't believe I got to go to work. I don't want you on Sunday nights having that pit in your stomach because you got to go to a job that you dread because you're draining your confidence. And not only did it drain your confidence, it also drain your ability to make a decision. Like what Rudy started to, be, started to begin with because you're afraid to do it. So listen, guys, um, the, the first quarter of 2018 already passed. We're already in the second quarter. Tax day just passed. Listen, guys, you blink. We're already summertime. You blink twice. We're already in fall. You blink three times. It's Christmas time. Yep. And you're wondering why you didn't accomplish in 2018 what you set off to do in January 1st of 2018. Because you didn't have the confidence to express yourself. You had the confidence to actually do. So that being said, Rudy, thanks for being part of the show, man. Any, any last thoughts here before I pull up, pull, before I pull up a special song for you? Uh, well, you know what? Um, thanks for having me, man. This is always fun. It's always uh, great hanging around with you. I love the value that you're adding to the community, man. I would encourage you guys, you know, really uh, um, listen to what Matt said and, and make the decisions that you need to make in your life to be able to experience greatness, man. You were born for greatness. Don't settle for mediocrity. Don't let anybody settle or tell you that you need to settle. If, if that's the case, get rid of them and find yourself the right people. So we love you. We care about you guys. We're here for you. Just like this song, man. Like, I don't know about tomorrow. Right? Hey. Listen, I don't know about tomorrow, but I do know about today. So, listen, guys, I, I want you guys to know that today. Don't do it tomorrow. Do it today. Do it now. Share this video. Let everybody know, man, that you're about to do something big in your life. Back it up with action. Surround yourself with the right people. Put yourself in a position of sticking with a decision long enough. Watch, guys. You you wake up. This, if you stick with it, I dare you. Next 30 days, next 60 days, next 90, the next 18 months, you have built a lifelong habit of continually increasing your confidence. And watch how your bank account changes. Yeah. Cool. So, hey, guys, you've been watching Mind, Mind Smart Show. The way to change your life by increasing your confidence is to surround yourself by people that want to know more, do more, and willing to have more in their life. You've been watching the Mind Smart Show. Your host, Money Smart Guy co-owner of PHB Agency, my business partner, Rudy Ortiz, here today. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, smart, continue to love smart, smart, and be money smart, smart today. God bless you guys. See you on Friday afternoon. See you next week. Sunday vlogs, baby. Woo-woo. Yeah.